Welcome back to Let's Play Elsinore. I'm Michael. I'm Cameron. Ophelia. And we're Ophelia, you still. Mustn't. Ophelia! <laughs> SpongeBob! <Yeah>. SpongeBob? <laughs> yeah, is aren't that there, like a. Uh, yeah, uh. SpongeBob! Yeah. <laughs> is that Plankton? <laughs> or is that just a voice I'm doing? <laughs> I think that might just be a voice you're doing. Hmm. Um, so, uh, last time, uh, I sort of ended with uh, kind of wondering about what we might do next. Uh, I decided we're going to follow Rosencrantz and Guildenstern around. We haven't given them really their due, so we want to see kind of uh, what goes on with them during the course of, of this whole thing, right? If we can't escape, uh, what if we were just minor characters? Uh, are they dead? Do you well, get it? I'm I'm warning them about their death right now. Oh, interesting. I uh, just noticed I have not seen. I don't believe I've commented on this before, but in that menu where you can ask people about things, there's just like otherworldly yeah. appearances or something. I've got it. <laughs> yes. No, it it has by the end by this point in the game, right? It has kind of a Morrowind vibe. Oh, and here's what we've we've told that uh, we've told Guildenstern that she's going to die, and she's decided that. That's not true, but let's fake her death so we can hold her funeral. Dang. Uh, Elsinore should release an expansion pack that just adds uh, one dialogue option to the end of all of those things that says, uh, you know, taking uh, a boat to the island of Solstein. <laughs> well, it's interesting you bring up bring up boats uh, based on uh, what's going to happen here with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Oh, yeah, dang, I forgot all about this stuff. Mm -hmm. All this boat plot. Hashtag boat plot. Well, if it if it continues, because we are now currently faking Guildenstern's death, uh, mm -hmm. Rosencrantz is like, yeah, no, she's like that. Guildenstern would like us to uh, tell Hamlet, because they have kind of a history. So much in the in, in in the world now for you to go and explore and learn about. Yeah, there really is. But not between Friday at noon <laughs> and Saturday at also at noon. Yeah, yeah. The the curse kind of does keep us in one place. But you know, if we keep telling people that the, the ship fails, the ship plot is going to fail. Maybe maybe something something will go our way. There's plants? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just, I need to get into Gertrude's room. Remember, her key is, or Irma's key mm -hmm. is hidden here. Mm -hmm. So is this episode just, uh, Michael gets up to a bunch of scampery? Yeah, there's there's a good bit of scampery happening here. I mean, what is, what is taking the path of a minor character who waits behind the scenes, but some scampery? Hmm... Here they go. Simming it up. Excuse me. Hmm. <sighs> I just. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Wait. You're faking Guildenstern's yes. death? And you didn't tell Rosencrantz? No. Oh, I, I misunderstood that a moment ago. I thought everyone was... I thought this was shenanigans. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I mean, it's shenanigans with me and Guildenstern. But that's her best yeah. friend. Well, sometimes that's... Why would you explain your friends? That's why you always friends need two friends. From shenanigans. So there can be shenanigans <laughs> against one of them. Uh, before you depart on a tale of uh, revenge have two friends yeah. <laughs> have two friends the J jarmish film <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what a bunch of the the more recent jim jarmish movies yeah. are about <laughs> just have two friends and bill and one of them is bill murray yeah. and so hamlet hamlet's pretty no. sad mm-hmm Dang. I just... 
up until this part of the game, no one has cared about Rosencrantz or Guildenstern. No, not especially. And then so let's see, what does what does Gertrude think about the fact that My lady. Guildenstern died? <laughs> Wait, I I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah that par parenthetical so let's tell claudius <laughs> since claudius you know hired them to spy on hamlet so yeah he he doesn't really care that much so she's hanging out in the graveyard just chilling? Yeah, no, yeah, that's where she said that she would hang hang out for her funeral. Mmm. A real uh Tom Sawyer. Yeah. <sighs> JTT got in, in trouble doing that. <laughs> he made his his aunt cry. Yeah. I saw that film. <laughs> Dang. Gilda. took a real turn. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very sad, right? They're, they're two mm -hmm. halves of one Stop. person, I think, is, is the way Tom Stoppard puts it in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Didn't Tom, uh, Tom Sawyer, didn't he take, uh, didn't Tom yeah. Stoppard, didn't Tom Stoppard take, uh, Huckleberry yeah. Finn with him? <laughs> Tom <laughs> when, Stoppard, uh, when, <laughs> took him, took Huckleberry Finn to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's gonna make oh. everyone mad as hell. Oh shit, only three people yeah. showed up? Oh. So at least we get this nice little uh, jig out of it. Oh yeah, that was some. That's a jam. This was a prank. Goodbye. Dang. Rosie. Just gonna run through Ophelia. That's what uh, Shakespeare wasn't uh, clear enough about. About, you know, Z fighting in the character model. <laughs> <laughs> back, back in the... I'm pretty sure in the original folio, there was, uh, you know, a lot of end notes about, uh, you know, the character collision and whatnot in the play. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when that was translated into the, um, the book version, <laughs> they left all that out. They left it on the cutting right. room floor. As, uh, as Guildenstern just... You know, realize she doesn't even have a first name. So, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that gets left out. Dang. And now she's conceived of a brilliant what? idea. You know, since she's just going to be a, a side character, she's going to hold a big side character party. <laughs> You're gonna go found the Asifal <laughs> Society. <Yes. laughs> I mean, there. <laughs> she, she wants to go meet in the woods and hold a party. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, just see if uh, Roger Calois will volunteer to be the human yeah, sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. Right, just be bopping your way on down there. So when when is the party? I think I missed when it is in the uh, time. Oh, it's uh, going to be like tomorrow afternoon, or actually. Oh, okay. More than that, it's going to be in the morning. Mm. So I, I guess there's, a, I mean, maybe you don't know, but can there be side characters that show up to this party that we haven't met yet? Uh, no. I mm. Is how I will answer that question. Okay. Hmm. Dang. Um, Ophelia has clipped through a dog. <laughs> Yes. Speaking of collision, uh, I think you mean her royal mount. <laughs> Ophelia hit level forty. 
<laughs> yeah, she, well, no, actually, she spent a thousand gold to get flying, <laughs> so she's gonna just take out, take off, and go straight up on the y yeah. axis. <laughs> uh, in case it's not clear, none of this is in the original play. None of this is going on. Mm-hmm. Like this is totally just like all of the like side characters hanging out and jamming, and I think it's very cute that. Uh, and, and very amusing, right? That if you choose to follow Rosencrantz and Guildenstern around, then you get to hang out with a lot of the supporting characters. Oh. Mm-hmm. And it would be easy to do like a uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are yeah. dead kind of uh, meta commentary. And I guess some of that's going on here, mm-hmm. right? But uh, I like that the, the designers have, um, uh, you know, taken the ethic of that and then done something. Right with it, you know, kind of in the game world. It would be very easy to do, like, a meta reflection, like, pointing at the player kind of thing. Right, here. right. And, like, you know, and even the stuff that they're talking about is clearly, like, of a piece with Stoppard's play, like, uh, Guildenstern saying, you know, if I die, I won't even know that I'm dead, so what does it matter? Like, that's a very uh, sort of absurdist... It, it's in keeping with the absurdist kind of humor of that play, right? Uh, uh paying homage not only to Ham- Hamlet, but sort of its paratexts and, yeah. as you say, right, or as you suggested, right, not just sort of, like, adapting the Stoppard play, but kind of, like, operating on the same principle. Mm-hmm. Well, wow, Ophelia is, like, fully morphed with uh-huh. that dog. <laughs> still still doing it. Um, John Carpenter presents yeah. us. <laughs> That dog doesn't party. <laughs> the dog yeah. must remain vigilant. Mm-hmm. Uh. Dang. Yeah, so we know, basically, where's Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are heading. The problem we had when we tried to warn them that they were going to die is they hadn't been ordered onto the boat to, like, escort Hamlet. So why would they care if I told them they were going to die on a boat? Hmm. So it kind of seems like we got to get the boat situation into place before we can actually warn them about it, which maybe sort of means we got to have our dad get killed. Dang. Well, it's non-canonical, so don't stress. (laughs) Just hide behind this thing for hours at a time. Entire days. And we're going to see a scene that uh, is very famous, very integral to Shakespeare's play, but weirdly enough, not one that I have put on screen yet. It's the famous beer chugging scene. Um, uh, that is in Act what? Uh, act one. No, it's beginning of Act two, maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm being totally where, serious. Uh, by the way, there is a beer chugging scene. <laughs> where where Hamlet uh, is wearing his uh, college <laughs> sweater, and he comes out with that big bottle of Jack and chugs the whole thing. <laughs> yes. My lady. So if you don't remember, what has just happened is Hamlet put on a play that very strongly accused Claudius of being a murderer, which he is. But Mm -hmm. Claudius was offended by this and being the king, him being offended is very, very important business. Yeah, and so this is where, you know, tell tell me if I'm wrong and I don't want to spoil the end of it, but this is where Polonius gets murdered off screen repeatedly right okay just trying to orient this in my my old brain there's a ghost ghost shows up very famously uh the ghost shows up at the beginning of the play and then halfway through the play and halfway through gertrude cannot see the ghost so the the ghost is visible at the beginning of the play to hamlet and other people midway through the play the ghost shows up and only hamlet can see the ghost 
and there's very there's a lot there's oh, a lot right. of uh, sort of debate in in stagings and interpretations. Is the second ghost really there, or is it just something Hamlet's seeing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was that? I did know this. This is like the one thing I know about. Die, right. you know. As we can see, Hamlet has kind of lost it. Dang. Oh wait, so and, and Hamlet thought that was uh, the old scamp yeah, himself. Hamlet thought it was Claudius. Hmm, got it. Well, that's a real jam for the music too. I like that that uh, that dude just hanging out. There. Yeah, Marcellus. Uh, also, mm -hmm. <laughs> little soundbite from Hamlet there. So here we're getting clear confirmation that Gertrude did, was not in on Claudius's murder plot. That is a thing that can differ in various uh, stagings and interpretations. Yeah, I saw uh, one of the Doctor Who's in the Revengers tragedy, <laughs> the BBC film, um, which is roughly the same as... Yeah, Hamlet, exactly. Right? And uh, she was in on it in that one, yeah. I think. Uh, Revengers tragedy is... Um, a, a Middleton play that is fantastically weird. It is, it is a, I mean, it's a parody of Hamlet is what it is. Mm. Okay. Made a weird moment where that got hung. Uh, yeah, no, there are, I mean, <laughs> the, the Revengers tragedy, I would argue is in fact a, a parody of revenge tragedy, which is Hamlet is a generic example of that subgenre. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, it's it's a pretty wild. Have you seen yes. the, the like post apocalyptic yeah, with, um, film? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Derek Jacoby is the uh, the old Duke or whatever. Hmm. I'm sorry, Ophelia. Hey, Bernardo. Yes. Yeah, everyone's everyone's dead, or like you know, Dad's dead again. Yep. I like that at this point you're like, I don't need to listen to the announcement. Yeah. I know what it sounds like when my dad dies. Thank you. Thank you, Bernardo. So, uh, broad plot-wise, in this playthrough, everything is basically normal. Yes. No, nothing has really gone okay. off track. My lord. Got it. We're just seeing some stuff that we haven't dead. seen before, and we got that kind of fun little uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern mm -hmm. thing. What? Got it. But our overall goal is to see if uh, maybe following Rosencrantz and Guildenstern might get us somewhere where we would not get otherwise. Mm hmm. And so now, as. as... Unlocking more. <laughs> uh, yeah. And as, as I uh, intimated, we had to let our father die in order to get on the boat. To England. All we had to do was mm. uh, tell Claudius that we knew it was going to happen. There's a lot you got to keep in your head in this game. My ladies. And notably, they have a queen, uh which is, huh. I think, suggesting that this is taking place sort of contemporarily with, like, Elizabethan England. Because oh. in the play... And that would not be the yeah. case. In in the play, it's, Got um... It. We don't see, like, the monarch of England on stage, but, like, it's just... It is old England, right? It's, it's very much, um, sort of suggested to just be some, like... Very, like, whatever medieval oh, English course. king people wanted to imagine. Mm -hmm. Farewell. Okay. Well, get on yeah. out of here. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> Immediately.
Wait, that's the boat? No. That seems that's, insufficient to no, get to England. Or that's wait, going to take us out to the boat itself, right? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm just seeing one boat on screen is all I'm saying. Guildenstern is very happy about having huh. diplomatic immunity while, while we're in London. <laughs> Farewell. Hmm. Oof. Ophelia. <laughs> Ophelia. <laughs> Wonderful. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what? Like Gertrude's just so sanguine about this whole thing. And here we are. We're on the boat. That little boat got this big? Mm -hmm. Just add water. Like a transformer? Oh, yeah. It's a big part of it. Normally, you're not supposed to get water inside the boat, but for an expando boat, that's very important. Mm. Gilda. Uh oh. Lady Rosencrantz. Ooh. This is a weirdly detailed question, but how long does it take to get from here to England? Um, much longer than is absolutely possible given the time frame that Shakespeare seems to suggest. Got it. Like, I mean, that's that's the thing about Shakespeare plays, right? Is that there's not really a, a strict observance to chronological time. People will leave and return as 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 is served by the narrative, and there will often be, like, conflicting time schemes at work. Mm, much like an Assassin's Creed game. Hmm. Yeah, actually. Hmm. Interesting. I can't believe that Shakespeare has almost reached that mm -hmm. height. Of well, it's just, he just needed to write more about the Templars is the thing. That was his big <laughs> mistake, actually, was not writing enough about the Templars. It's a, a common opinion and fact. Yeah. Well, we just found uh, Hamlet's death warrant. Mm-hmm, yeah. Wait, so who's supposed to murder him, though? Uh, England. Like, oh, he's being executed as so a they're... state, like, prisoner. Dang. Like, the history is that England owes some amount of fealty to Denmark um, from a previous war or skirmish, and as a result, like, mm. Denmark can make these uh, sort of requests of England. Listen. Yeah, I played Crusader Kings yeah. 3. I yeah, know how exactly. it works. <laughs> now Hamlet's trying to get all high and mighty against Guildenstern. Do Rosencrantz and Guildenstern know that they're taking him to they be executed? Do not. Okay. I feel like I've asked this exact question probably several <laughs> episodes ago, but um, I'm doing it for the yeah. audience, of course, to make sure they remember. <laughs> oh, and now we're... So Guildenstern and Hamlet used to be an item... Mm hmm yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that. That's come up before. <gasps> but Guildenstern has also met someone. It's us. What? what? Wait, do we know that? I... <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the explanatory. <laughs> hmm. Aw. <gasps> Dang. <laughs> Wow. You can't simplify my feelings. Yeah, so here we are, uh, basically accusing Hamlet of being a, a serial uh, monogamist. Ophelia. Wow. And, like, specifically, uh, just not a good wow. guy. Look. That's not true. <laughs> what? Like, he. He apparently only mm. dates women of there's color. A... <laughs> yeah, there's something interesting going on there yeah. with with who gets to be a Danish woman. Uh, hmm. Interesting. We're like calling out Hamlet. <laughs> yeah. 
canceled. Yeah. I think it might be the murder that Hamlet would be canceled for. <laughs> I mean, it, if you weren't convinced just, that he should be sent off to be executed before this point, this is, is really kind of proving it. Yeah. Dang, they yeah, are. No, this is just like giving extended it to call outs on, on shitty Hamlet. <laughs> well, I mean, he needs to hear it. Dang. Like, I was losing it when I first got to this in my own play because it does just keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, and he's just accepting it yeah. like a champ. Yeah. This is what happens when literally nothing you do has any consequence because time's going to reset <laughs> in two and a half days. Yeah. I, uh, I like, too, that he's, like, you know receiving this call out, getting that information, maybe hopefully going to work on it and will be executed by the English state in two days. <laughs> Rosencrantz hey. is uh, still seasick and I can't talk to her about anything. Yeah, I wouldn't want to talk about anything while corking it either. I get it. And that's actually just what I'm doing is trying to figure out what I should be listening to or about wow he really took it to heart he's gonna literally work on himself mm -hmm. all the time that he has left mm -hmm. I don't think you can choose to live when you're being killed by the state Where, where's he going indoors i guess he's going to i must make haste to over there i need to be better and what's he going to do he's going to uh find his execution notice and then forge a new one that instead has rosencrantz and guildenstern get executed oh okay and we this has happened before yes. this is how it happens or we, we've seen the other yes. side of this this is how rosencrantz and guildenstern got get dead got it okay Oof, well, that really kind of takes a, a whole new uh, perspective on that betrayal, given that he just received all this information. He's like, well, I'm going to work on myself, but I'm also going to murder this woman. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, pirates swoop in and render it all irrelevant anyhow. Hmm. <laughs> that, <laughs> that audio is great. <laughs> Yes, this is Captain Grace. She's the pirate captain. Guildenstern. Is she an, an OC? Uh, I mean, well, in the well, sense well. that this character is absolutely not in Shakespeare's play, yes. But I think she is yes. based on Grace O'Malley, who was a historical figure. Hmm. Hmm. But there are pirates. That, like, this event happens in the original yes, play. Yes, yes. Pirates do... Uh, board Hamlet's ship and hold him hostage. Was this a big problem at the time? Uh, piracy? Piracy? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. Okay. In as much as piracy was always a problem when a lot of your uh, uh, trade was going by, like, you know, merchant ship. Mm -hmm. I mean, and as I said, I'm pretty sure this is based mm -hmm. on a, a historical figure. Yeah. Gotcha. She was an uh, an Irish pirate. Captain Grace or Maddie. Yep. Hmm. I don't give a horse's mm -hmm. ass. <laughs> That's the ultimate Hamlet thing to be like. Well, I shouldn't have murdered your dad either, <laughs> but uh, I did Just it anyway. This boat. He's not my real dad. My real dad is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. So we're learning uh, a bit about Captain Grace here. 
character. All these all these pirates have the exact same yes. portrait. Dang, and Grace has her own subplot yep. that we can learn about. And I mean, we're here, so let's let's uh, follow Grace's subplot. I mean, we got out of Hamlet. Hmm. Are there is so is this just a uh, a wild romp through a historical character? Or is this some other play? We uh, I mean, this is just a wild romp with a historical character, right? There is, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Hmm. So we learned that Grace was married at one point. As you said, we there's there's a whole subplot here. There is no Irish queen. So as long as they don't attack, attack English ships. Uh, hmm. I uh, I love that what? their portraits are exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> I like that people are just saying like stating facts, and it's like Ophelia believes this now. <laughs> I mean, isn't that how the process works? That's what school is, right? Mm -hmm, I guess so. Wow. <laughs> McDonald's is president <laughs> over here. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. In what sense? This this little, uh, the little Captain Grace subplot. Well, it just feels like for the most part in this game, like, uh, you know what you're yeah. getting into when you, like, go down a, uh -huh. a, a route. And uh, this is a route we went down that had to do with Hamlet and Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. And we are now, like, in a little side path mm -hmm. with Captain Grace. A little, uh, I don't know. Just feels it a little is, bit there's, odd. There's a lot the here rest of the game. for, uh, it, it's yeah. kind of like, I mean, it almost feels like you have wandered into, like, the sequel to this game in a way. Oh, yeah. Right? Like the further adventures of Ophelia. <laughs> kind of a, like a, like just a series of yeah. short stories. So now That'd she's okay. going to teach us how to fight. Do oh, can you remember that forever? I, I actually don't think it. So gives when you, you any when you wake back up, up, you know, that Kung would Fu? be good. But yeah. Well, in that world, you could like treat, you could treat it like the Matrix, um, and you would just like go to the same place over and over again. To right, fight. just like go and train with her, and then just like yes. <laughs> hyperbolic time chamber it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the endings, right? Where uh, Ophelia goes to the hyperbolic time chamber <laughs> and is wearing uh, hyper clothes that weigh ten thousand <laughs> yeah. pounds. And just ends with her like punching through Elsinore. Mm hmm. It could happen. There's a lot going on in this game. I. Get low to the ground. <laughs> oh. It's the art of crouch fighting. Nothing to it. Very similar to the mystery of chess boxing. <laughs> In, in, in power and skill. Now then. Ophelia. <laughs> How unladylike to learn to dagger fight. <laughs> oh, my prince. Dang. <laughs> She's just like, I didn't kill them because they were Danish. I killed them because they were weak. I, yeah, I also like the kind of uh, self-fulfilling logic of I stabbed them because their flanks were undefended. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we can justify a lot that way. Well, I stole it because it was stealable. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> what, I'm sorry, Apparently what? The current event is interrupted by a sudden interlude. Uh, here, Hamlet is supposed to like try to talk to us, but it can't load character models outside of the door. So we've got this very strange situation. Oh. Whoa. 
you broke it. That's the, that's the one thing that the the uh, time loop simulation mm-hmm. can't handle. So, Hamlet's finally finally developed some sort of plot. Hmm. Uh. I like that he's really uh, you know put a pin and working yep. on himself. <laughs> to like get, to get rid of these pirates. I like how he's enlisting us, as if he has reason to trust us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I you, so I mean I think you that have to understand Ophelia. I it's really want to kill Richard Grants and Guildenstern. <laughs> yeah. That's very important to me in my development. Uh, well, it's just interesting that how the the game kind of takes advantage of their relationship in the play the ambiguity of that Mm -hmm. relationship and uses it to like just power the plot like anytime there's any contradiction it's just like well hamlet's a confused dude when this when it comes to this relationship hamlet will ask us to do literally anything because he does not know anything that he actually wants us to do yeah so naturally like he told us they're going to have a mutiny uh we're gonna we're gonna tell Captain mm-hmm. Grace that Hamlet is planting planning immunity a, a mutiny. He is immunity. diplomatic, a mutiny. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want to call out to just a second ago that she called him a rooster <laughs> shit, which is very good. He killed my father by mistake last night. <laughs> uh, just an <laughs> FYI. <laughs> he- he murdered my own father, but I've seen it happen about 40 times already, so I'm not really that stressed <laughs> about it. Hmm, yeah, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> In the arms of, oh. <laughs> As you say, like, there's just, it's like, there's just more and more back here. Yeah. <laughs> this is a wild boat. There's just a lot, a lot of plot developing, a lot of people just, uh, it's it's a very, uh, uh, you know, as the philosopher Michel Foucault would say, it's a true heterotopia. It's very funny, because one of the papers that I wrote in grad school was about how uh, the, the boat... Uh, oh. In Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, uh, which is a, that is that shows up in in that play, but it doesn't show up in Hamlet uh, as the single space that is in uh, that play that is not in the original play. It is therefore a heterotopia. That was what the oh. entire argument was about, and I used uh, Foucault's idea to talk about. Uh, Hamlet as as like a, a disciplinary structure for like Stoppard and he like tries to write himself out of that through the heterotopia of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. I just like calling everything that takes place on a boat a heterotopia. It works. In fact, I believe that's also one of yeah. the examples that Foucault uses. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm just talking about rowdy pirate boats. They're just going, yep. huh? They're just sw- swapping life tales. I. And things outside this maps, <gasps> the new world. Greenland. <laughs> S- What's Snowlandia? Of course. I have no idea. Wait, who are her people? Yeah, what is... Well, I'm going to Google Snowland. Well, I'll look it up later. Sound off in the comments about what Snowlandia <laughs> is. And this, now we're getting all of Captain Grace's stories. Hmm. 
and she's kind of beaten willing to take us along. Mm-hmm. She is in fact coming on to us. Mm-hmm. With a roomy yep, function sure thing. You slammed that yep. button quick. You were ready to go. <laughs> I mean, we've gone this far, like, let's just juggernaut straight to the end. Mm-hmm. Ophelia learns more about a journey at sea. <laughs> uh, that's very, that's what I call it, too. Rated R for journey at sea content. <laughs> well, now we're going to tell her about this, the mutiny. I'm... Because we had to... We had to learn her life story and fall in love with her first. <laughs> just FYI, oh yeah, just uh, forgot. I went to bed and, you know, went to sleep, but uh, FYI. I, I, I know we've said this several times now, but it just keeps going. <laughs> this is the longest subplot maybe that we've done so far. Now let's tell Rosencrantz and Guildenstern that Hamlet still wants them to get murdered. How do you know? He told me. Mm, <laughs> dang. So this is the thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's scrolling. Okay. Yeah, I think he would. I think he might not be your friend. I think Hamlet might not be yeah, anyone's friend. I, I think I think Hamlet's maybe just not good. Not a good person to be around. Yeah. No, I think he might be a bad person. I Am I the first person to say this? <laughs> Hamlet, kind of bad. I feel like I've never heard anyone say this, but Hamlet might be a bad person. Am I coming up with like new ideas <laughs> yeah, on the show? Yeah, That's no, wild. You're going to get your honorary PhD. Oh, finally. A second one? <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> Now here's me wondering. My first honorary. I can't. I can't talk to Hamlet because he's upset, and I just. Huh. <laughs> you just gotta wait yeah. it out, I guess. I warned everyone about the mutiny. <gasps> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. What happened there is he just stands there, motionless, brooding for 14 <laughs> hours, and then yells, "Now." <laughs> <laughs> How could you? Dang. What? They didn't know, Hamlet. You traitors. What? Hamlet. Well, yep. there was no way I could have told them that, but... Yeah, that's a yeah. You didn't have the option no, to I tell them, did you? Ah, oh, weird. <gasps> Mr. Hamlet, I gave you all the clues. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> Just like wheels around on me. Now, we have to decide whether or not Grace is going to murder us all. Uh. Hmm. Now, I don't... <laughs> I'm taking you all home for being <laughs> naughty. I'm taking you home because you're annoying. Ophelia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this really does feel like its own little like mm -hmm. Fallout quest, hanging out on the boat. 
We can join a pirate crew. Whoa, is this an ending? Yeah, joining a pirate crew. Now then. Cool. Yeah. 100%. Windmill yeah. slam that. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's kind of rude that you don't get to wear what you want to wear on the pirate ship. Well, you know, you've got to establish a sense of unity among the pirates. I feel like that's not what pirates are about. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's the opposite of what pirates are all about. They all get to wear their own cool clothes. I saw the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I guess like designing your fit would probably be like the highlight of being a pirate, really. Yeah, everyone literally looks like a created character from uh -huh. Saints Row in pirate I'm content. I'd wear a bandana. <laughs> So not only did we like kind of get over here. close to England, we turned around and came back. Onward. I really wish we could have seen an establishing shot of this boat drifting around. Oh, oh no. At max speed. And this is it's as far as we get. Oh. Scoo! So, um, I mean... I guess we don't really have much of a choice. If being a minor character doesn't get us out of this for good, then we're just going to have to bite the bullet and find that magic book next time on Elsinore. Goodbye!